welcome everybody good to see familiar faces new faces and uh, this topic has generated a lot of interest among uh, you know new people also i see many yoga teachers also here those of you who have done your teacher training with us so it is an interesting topic it is a very beneficial topic it's a vast topic and uh, the reason why we are bringing this to you is because now we have been teaching you <laughs> uh you know physical practices asanas pranayam over a period of time many of you have been practicing with us also and we thought now we should also go a little deeper into uh the you know yogic studies as per our uh, you know vedantas and as per our scriptures that has been told so it is not just the external factors that we are dealing with right we also want to go a little more into the subtler practice now and that's why we've been doing a lot of studying practicing uh, together we've been doing as you know eight of us have had this experience and we've been practicing together and we've realized the benefits of you know these practices which we thought we should bring out to all of you because i mean most of you have been you know with us uh, practicing on a regular uh, you know level and must be wondering that i am doing yoga i'm doing pranayam so what is this okay it should, should also help me but every class as you know we cannot include there are so many things which we cannot include so we thought we'll curate you know these classes and deal with uh, specific issues so as you have been following us and being with us we dealt with acidity we dealt with uh, bp issues we are going to bring you a lot more of these uh, various specific uh, practices for dealing with specific issues also but today we thought that you know tri dosh we've heard this many times right so we thought we'll bring this to you because that is who we are that is what you know comprises each of us and uh, as indians we all know and luckily all over the world everybody has heard this word tri dosh so we'll talk about it a small basic presentation not going too much into ayurvedic terms because we are not uh, trained ayurveda practitioners but we have uh, been trained under practices yogic practices uh, breathing practices geared towards you know balancing our doshas and we thought we have to bring them out to you because we found them very beneficial so we'll have, we have a small powerpoint presentation for you the first slide yeah so this is exactly what it meant okay so a practical approach now all of us are familiar nature right when you mess with nature what happens and we are all familiar that nature universe it is comprised of okay we can call it dust and that same dust is within all of us the universe breathes within us we all know that and we all are familiar with what comprise the five elements pancha mahabhutas pancha tattvas that we know it the basic ones right which is fire uh, f a s e w the short form the fire the air the space the earth the water all of us are familiar with that or also it is the in simple terms you know agni vayu akash prithvi jala right and our body is also basically comprised of these same elements so we are actually one with nature each of us have these five elements but inherently okay all of us are born with a particular constitution each of us have various proportions of all of these five elements so when they are in various proportions they are condensed all these five elements are condensed in our body in various proportions and that is what constitutes our prakriti as it is called our nature our basic fundamental nature now that is something we cannot change that is will be there with us from birth throughout our lives but we can try to balance these uh, elements okay can we have the next slide so you i mean like this is nothing new most of us are familiar with it right the three doshas the vata the pitta and the kapha now vata 
immediately okay not now that doesn't mean today we are not going to address like oh i have vata and pitta or you have kapha and pitta no all of us all three are present in each person remember that and the aim of these sessions is not to deal with one dosha the aim is to balance okay we want to create a balance that's what yoga is about so now i'm just telling you basic simple things about vata dosha vata air there are elements that are associated is basically air and space okay now what do you know about air air is constantly moving air is light so these uh, traits are also present in each of us that also determines our personalities right so even within your own household you'll have noticed that you and your sibling will react differently to the same thing or you and your parents or you and your other family members although you are genetically connected to each other you will react differently in a hot uh, room in a cold room okay to certain foods to certain situations every person will react differently and the reason behind this is your doshas because you have them in various proportions someone else your sibling your parents will have them in different proportions so what is vata dosha it basically means either it is you know high or low like we know with any other thing something high or something low now what happens when there is a you know imbalance we well, let's call it imbalance then we suffer things like you know joint pains muscle spasms pure circulation now, or sometimes these people who have a dominant vata dosha usually they are very energetic they want to move all the time they find it very difficult to sit in place in one place they are full of energy but when there is an imbalance just the opposite of that happens okay i'm just giving you a basic uh, you know idea now the next one is the pitta dosha now pitta okay basically we have all have heard those who are familiar with this word okay pitta which actually basically it means your fire it is fire element in the body and this fire is what dominates actually more and it is also responsible for digestion it is responsible for breaking down all the nutrients it is responsible for uh, you know assimilating digesting and providing the energy to the body we need that definitely need that but and these people actually are the ones who are go getters they want to achieve something okay again very general so this pitta dosha is also associated with the guna called sattvik guna whereas vata is rajasik guna just you know treat them as terms don't get too much into it but when there is too much of heat in the body okay pitta dosha is high you may have heard heartburn acidity problems related to digestion these are things we suffer on and off okay next one is the third one kapha dosha kapha basically it is responsible for actually it is a it is it is mainly responsible for structure of the body okay the elements that are associated with it are uh, water and space now many times we suffer seasonal allergies or we have weight issues okay we don't know what is happening we try many things but it does not you know solve itself and many times we don't realize that it is a imbalance of this dosha that is you know causing these things so all of us have gone through this through various periods of our life where we experience many of these it's not that you will experience only one many times some of us experience spasms some of us experience indigestion some of us experience you know weight issues allergy issues so which means there is an imbalance at that particular time in your body okay so this is what i want to tell you about the doshas because this is just to identify we are not going to ask you to identify your dosh or take a quiz about it because it is not one particular thing that we are addressing we are trying to address all of them and have them balanced okay yeah next slide now what happens okay imbalance happens now many times okay any of these elements sometimes there is too much of the vata element or less of it too much of fire less of it too much of kapha less of it so these imbalances happen many times because of age also now inherently many of us as humans again this is a very general terminology but when we are born 
up to generally 30 years okay it i mean as per ayurveda kapha is the dominant uh, you know dosha in our body then when we are in the middle age it is the pitta that dominates and then 60 and above it is normally the vata that dominates so age has a effect Many times your mental health. Now, all of us know energy within our body is not just the physical energy. It is the mental energy also. So many times your mental health, your mental state, that also everything is interrelated. And then changes in your diet, changes in your lifestyle and season. Now, all these are again connected. In certain season, we always say you should have certain foods. So you should avoid certain foods. So your diet plays an effect on, you know, again, your doshas, which could get imbalanced because of something you ate, which did not suit you in that particular season. So what do you normally say that change your lifestyle? Okay, we all know that by now we've been bombarded with that. Okay, so and that's why most of you, all of you are here today, because you want to incorporate uh, you know, these practices into your lifestyle, but it happens, you know, change happens. And then as a result of that, we suffer imbalances. Okay. So how do you correct these imbalances? Okay. So next slide. Now we know that balanced diet, we all know it. We've learned it in school. And again, we know what it is. We may or may not necessarily follow it, but we try to stick to it. We also try to have a daily routine. We know all this that, you know, you should wake up at a certain time, sleep at a certain time, eat balanced food, exercise. We know all that. Or we need to get adequate sleep. We need to get adequate rest. We need to have enough water. We need to drink enough water. And the big word nowadays is stress and stress management. So earlier, in fact, stress was a word which actually was most of us, luckily, I mean, at least in my age group, we were not so familiar with it, right? But now even the younger people are experiencing this stress and the ill effects of stress. Now, what is ill effect? This is the doshas that we are talking about, okay? Now, other than these things which we know, you can balance these doshas with yoga. We have experienced it. We have been practicing it for the past many months. And that's why we sort of, thought that we should bring it out to you just like you have a balanced meal right now just because you cannot tolerate a particular thing or you've been asked to have only particular things you won't eat only those things you will have a balanced meal you will have all types of tastes you'll have sweet you'll have salty you'll have bitter you'll have sour you'll have all types of tastes you'll have carbs you'll have proteins you'll have uh, water you'll have you know every element in your food similarly in your practices also, you need to include, okay, everything in your practice, which will deal with all the vata, pitta, all the three doshas. Now, in our classes, you are mostly dealing with, although we try to bring you pranayama, although we try to incorporate, within an hour, we are basically trying to teach you things which deal with your external physical body, the bigger muscle groups, okay? And pranayama to just help you with your breathing, which is usually not in a very good state when you are not practicing your pranayam, but you slowly start teaching your body. So what we thought that we need to include, you know, practices not just for the physical external body, but the subtle body. Now we want to move higher up into our practices, right? So for that, you know, we thought we have to include mudras. Now mudras can be not just with hands, face mudras, body mudras, finger mudras, because there are nerve endings. All of us are familiar with our five fingers and our five fingers are associated with the five elements. Okay, There are nerve endings at the tips of our fingers. That is why many times in our classes, we'll say, you know, dhyana mudra or, you know, any other surya mudra, various mudras. Sometimes we ask you to keep it like this. Sometimes we ask you to keep it like this. You will be explained why we do this. So mudras plays a huge part. Then breath. We usually ask you to breathe in fully, breathe out fully, try to prolong your exhalations. But many times we cannot focus completely unless you are doing just a pranayam session. We actually are bringing you something which is called breath retention. You're familiar with it, but you have not practiced it. I think most of you for as 
you know, to, to reap the benefits of it. So breath retention will be taught to you. And although we have chants in our regular classes, certain specific chants which we have added into these sessions that we have planned make our sessions holistic for balancing. So every session will have, you know, addressing all the three doshas using mudras, using breath retention techniques, using uh, chanting and dynamic physical practices. So it is not just a sort of like a very slow moving or a very fast moving. It's a very balanced class. Remember that. And all this has an effect on your basically stress. Stress, whether you are going out there into a corporate world, whether you're dealing with it on a day-to-day -day basis at home, even while you're driving, there is stress and that actually leads to a lot of physical ailments and imbalance in the doshas, right? Mental, it starts, translates to physical. Adhis to vyadhis. Those of you, the teachers are familiar with this. So that's why the deep breathing, that's why the progressive muscle relaxation, that will help you. And all of you will experience that when you do not just a drop-in session. Okay, it's just like you can't do one session and then experience, you know, feel like you're feeling that balance within your body. You need to experience because all the sessions are different. So at least nine of them is something which unless you experience all of them, you will not see or not experience a difference within your body. And you will not be able to learn them even enough to practice on your own. Only when you do it consistently, because they have been planned in such a way, okay, where we build it up slowly, we deal with each of the doshas differently, okay? Uh, so this is how you, we are planning to bring it to you to balance all the doshas, okay? Next. Now, I'll hand it over to Jaya, because this is another important part of the practice, bandhas. So she's going to explain to you how they are going to help you. Thanks, Ashwini. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to make it a bit of interactive because most of you are yoga practitioners or yoga teachers who've been dealing with all of these terms that you've heard, right? Okay. Um, just very briefly, can some of you tell me what are bandhas and kumbhaks in your own words? Yes, I see I can... a talk. I think yeah, you is, sorry. bandhas are, uh, there are three bandhas, Uriyan okay. band, Narendra band and Mool band. Okay. And Kumbhak is like Bahir Kumbhak or Antarik Kumbhak and you okay. can hold. Okay. 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 Fine. Good. And then why, yeah, that's perfectly fine. That's, that's the right answer anyway. So that's good. So why do you think we need to apply bandhas and Kumbhak? Why does... Um, yoga emphasize on bandhas and kumbhas. To enhance the lungs, uh, oxygen carrying capacities uh, and also to, uh, you know, let lungs stay without oxygen for longer time. So that again increases the capacity. So maybe I should have said doctors don't answer the question. I should have started. <laughs> sorry, <with> sorry. <laughs> that's okay. That's perfectly fine. No, that's good. So it's coming from the mouth of a doctor. So, you know, uh, sealed and approved them. Okay, so basically, yes, so I'm going to talk about bandhas and uh, kumbhaks a lot here. So the reason why we are taking these two as a specific topic here is with this particular program of the Tridosha, we are going to be teaching you progressively to uh, kind of apply the bandhas and kumbhaks. Okay? We understand that not everybody is a practitioner who can hold their breath for like a minute or two or anybody who knows what these pandas are or how to even properly apply them. So uh, we are not assuming that you know and you do it on a daily basis. So there has to be a progressive practice to it so that you understand your body is ready for it. So the initial few classes you will see is explaining more on how to do it and maybe make you hold for a lesser time or something. And then progressively, we will take you and increase the time and increase the pounds and everything. Okay. So um, the, we are going to talk briefly about what these bandhas and kumbhaks do so that you understand when you apply, uh, when you start coming for these classes as to why we are emphasizing so much on that. Okay. So I'm going to start the PowerPoint. 
um, to just briefly talk about that. So like um, Yogini mentioned, so she talked about, oh, she gave the examples of the three bandhas, right? So what are bandhas? Uh, in a very simple term, if you want to talk about it, it is to hold something, to tighten it or lock it, right? And generally, we've heard as or as teachers, some of you, even when you take your classes, we always do that in conjunction with a pranayam or with a mudra, right? So that is how we've always in, uh, associated a bandha with, right? And like Yogini mentioned, we have the Jalandar band, Mula bandha, Udiyan bandha, and the combination of the three, Mahabandha, which is a slightly advanced uh, practice that you do once you have perfected the other three bandhas. What happens when you apply a bandha? So the aim is to lock the prana or the energy that we talk about and direct that pranic energy to different parts of the body so that you can strengthen those different systems and the organs. So that's the main aim of why we ask you to do the bandha, right? So next we're going to talk about... Uh, We're going to talk about the kumbhaks. Okay, so what is a so what is a kumbhak? So someone mentioned about the retention, right? So so in layman terms, it's about the breath retention. So we've done. You've heard us say about after doing a kapalbhati or something, we ask you to hold the practice, or rather, um, when you do a certain pranayam practice after an inhalation or after an exhalation, we ha have you hold the breath. Okay. So, and sometimes we ask you to kind of, you know, be with the pause in your, the spontaneous breath that you have after you do a round of kapal bhati or a bastrika, right? So that we call, what is called as a cable kumbhak. But a cable kumbhak is not just that few seconds. What we are peeking into is just a dot of what is to be. Cable kumbhak is in an advanced practice where you can be spontaneous without that breath, that breath cessation that we talk about. So for a longer time is actually what a cable kumbhak is. So what we are peeking into after a kapal bhati or a bastrika is just a minute thought of what can, okay? So what happens in a kumbhak? So briefly, Tanvi talked about the oxygenation part of it. Increased oxygenation. So what do you mean by increased oxygenation? When you hold the breath um, during a kumbhak, right? So it allows for an increased oxygenation of the blood. So as the oxygen is not expelled from the body, it can lead to improved energy and mental clarity. We, we just briefly talk about each of the points, a decreased heart rate. So when there is enough oxygen um, of the blood that happens, it leads to a decreased heart rate. The reason being, now the body's demand for the oxygen is now temporarily satisfied. So that's the reason why you are okay to hold the breath for a little longer time. And when that happens, what in, in turn it uh, reflects to the calming of um, the calming effect on the mind and the body. Next, we have your increased lung capacity. Okay. So the regular practice of kumbhak, so it's not just I do it one time and then my lungs are stronger, that's not going to happen. We know that, right? So a regular practice of kumbhak can help you to strengthen the respiratory muscle, which in turn can increase the lung capacity. I'm going to stop the um, sharing again. I'm going to have you all do something. Okay, so I just want you all to hold your fist of the palm, like the fist against each other and try to pull it apart as strong as you can pull it apart pull it apart pull it pull it pull it and release one more time do that pull it pull it strong excellent and release can someone tell me relation to what you did right now and what we are talking about can someone explain to me what happened Mm -hmm. Hold the breath. You hold your breath ultimately when you're pulling Perfect. it. Yeah, you hold your you're holding the breath. So unknowingly, what did you do? 
you applied mm-hmm. a kumbhak yes. yeah. right so on a day to day life or when you're trying to go into a balancing posture try doing a balancing posture you will hold your breath slightly right unknowingly on our day to day life we do apply kumbhak so kumbhak is not we are not introducing something to you which are unheard of so as the natural practice day to day life we do apply kumbhaks so why is this going to be so important during this sessions what you are doing is just for a fraction of second can you re- hold on like doing this without holding the kumbhak without breathing how long can you hold it at some point either you're going to release it or breathe in or something is going to happen right so are you getting the same effect of the kumbhak when you're doing this or the day to day practice you are not right so what we are going to try to achieve during these sessions is teach you how to properly do the kumbhak along with the different practices that we will teach you okay so which in turn will kind of focus on that kumbhak during the practice and in turn come and strengthen your organs yeah make sense okay so i'm going to move on to the on sharing the so increase lung capacity so that is what we are talking about okay next ah sorry we did go through this and we talked about uh, increase lung capacity and improve digestion so when you talk about that increase or uh, improved digestion there is a increased pressure in your abdomen so now try holding your breath after an inhalation or an exhalation doesn't matter and just focus around your abdomen just do that for like maybe 10 seconds is there an increase pressure in your abdomen give me a thumbs up if you feel that yeah excellent so when that pressure on the abdominal organs are now increased it can help you to stimulate the digestive system so thereby increasing not just your digestion but also your elimination okay stress reduction so when i ask you to say suppose i say take a nice deep inhalation and hold your breath just do that for me close your eyes a nice deep inhalation hold your breath for 10 seconds and i'll ask you when to stop and now release where was your focus and concentration it was in your within yourself you were focusing on holding that breath right so what does now that translate to you're turning in inward right and this induces a state of relaxation and calm within your body so this is going to help you with your stress reduction so to summarize there's plenty of benefits we always knew that bandhas kumbhaks mudras they all have benefits of their own when you do it right so with these classes we are going to emphasize a lot on that so you can reap in the benefit we have created a program where all of this is going to be combined together to give a very holistic approach to balance that vata pitta and kapha dosha okay so the benefits are going to be improved respiratory and circulatory functions improved concentration improved metabolism calming effect and increased energy okay so here as a this thing i want to just bring this uh, important note okay so why can't you just do hold your breath however you want to okay now i've heard that kumbhaks and bandhas are good for me so i know i've heard it i know how to do it so let me just go ahead and do it my own way the reason you want to do it under supervision is it's not always the right way so say suppose so what is your threshold right we you need to know what your threshold is you need to know when is it to hold for a longer time go beyond your range and when it is to stop and then come back to your normal breathing okay so we are here to teach you the right way of doing kumbha 
okay and it is not recommended to just hold your breath for an extended period of time without the supervision once you learn it once you mastered it yes you can do on your own okay so before i go there okay so i'm just going to talk about um who should and who shouldn't okay the immediate question for some of you might be i have a very high bp am i okay to do the kumbhak that you're talking about since your classes are going to focus a lot on kumbhaks and bandhas right valid question so that's why we say that we need you need to do it under supervision so if you are holding your breath or you are doing something after say suppose we ask you to hold your breath after an antar kumbhak after you inhale where you hold it okay and then if you are struggling to do that exhalation we are gasping for breath at the end of that that's not the right way to do it okay so there are uh you know the certain things you need to know what is your so you can ask the question you can we are there when you ask that question hey this is how i feel after i hold the breath so is this safe for me or should i reduce it or can i increase it okay so it's going to be an inter where you can ask us your doubts and we will help you in terms of what can be your rate okay so again um say suppose you've just gone through a surgery or you have a hernia where there's going to be a lot of abdominal pressure on those instances we will advise that probably now is not the time for you to do it okay so with that i'm just going to give the floor to um aarti who is going to talk about what you can now that you know um ashwini has explained to you about the tridoshas and the different factors of it and how why how you can balance it i've talked about the focus of the kumbhaks and the bandhas with these classes now aarti is going to walk you through with some um, practical session of where you can try it and she'll take it further on that um aarti i'm just giving you the spotlight hi everyone <clears throat> <clears throat> okay so i think everything has been covered with by ashwini and jaya as to what is what is going to be the plan like so what is expected of these sessions is the next question means what are we doing are we compromising on the hatha practices what we are doing in the class no we are not in fact in the past year we have prepared your body to come to this position and then we go ahead in all our sessions most of us are attending our sessions in most of our sessions we do the last 5 minutes 7 minutes of pranayam practices where we are doing pranayam or doing some mudras or something like this but in these sessions which are designed for the balance of the three dosh we are going to loop make a loop of the kumbhaks the mudras and the bandhas not i separately but together and how do we do it fine so before we have any more questions and anything let's practice some some of the basic things and then let's go ahead with our talks so if you want to sit on a mat feel free to do that if you are sitting on a chair it's fine whatever is comfortable for you okay <clears throat> yeah so i'm sitting on the mat it's okay even if you are on the chair so we'll be do doing some sitting practices and some one or two standing practices so just sit tall sit in a comfortable position spine tall close your eyes and just bring your awareness within you focus on your breaths just observe the flow of your breath and just interlace your fingers inhaling lift your hands up closer to your ears palms facing to the ceiling don't lift your shoulders relax your shoulders and sit tall and do normal breathing here right now just breathe normally 
be with your breaths. The Udgami Mudra. Now let's start looping everything together. So bring your awareness to your perineum region, the Muladhara Chakra. Just pull up the perineum region. Lift yourself up towards the ceiling. From the perineum region to the navel, to the chest, the Anahata Chakra. Right up to your forehead, the Adnya Chakra. Go tall, observe the breaths. And now take a deep inhale here. And hold the breath in into Antar Kumbha. As much as you can, as per your capacity, please do not overdo. And we follow it with very long, soft, smooth exhalation. Lengthen the exhalation to the maximum. And slowly release your hands. If you're sitting down, just join your feet in Baddha Konasan. Or even if you're sitting on a chair, it's okay. Just sit with parallel feet, parallel knees, sit tall. Get that length of your spine. Inhale here. And just on an Antar Kumbha, pull up the perineum region, the Ashwini Mudra, and hold it. Just hold it. Just tighten it. Please do not overdo. Release the Kumbha, release the Ashwini Mudra. We will repeat it one more time. Inhale. Hold the breath in. Squeeze the perineum region, the Muladhara Chakra, Antar Kumbha, and hold your breath in. And a long, soft, smooth exhalation, releasing the Mulaband. Join your knees. Again, sit in Sukhasan. We start with the Kaki Mudra. So inhale with your mouth, puff up your cheeks. Hold the breath in Antar Kumbha and just be there again, awareness on the Muladhara Slow exhalation through the nose, relax the Muladhara. Let's move ahead with one more sitting practice. So we do the Kechari Mudra. So the tip of the tongue, you're going to touch it to the upper palate as behind as possible. Now inhale, puff up your cheeks and eyes on the Adnya Chakra, the Bindi point, the Akasha Mudra with the Mulabhat. Hold it as per your capacity. Focus in between your eyebrows. 
and very slow, gentle, long, smooth exhalation. Just observe the calmness within you. Observe your breaths. Be in that state of mind with your breaths and just stand up wherever you are and just let's do one standing posture and just observe. Let's do the basic trikonasana. <clears throat> just stand with your feet apart. Rotate your right leg. Stretch your hands. Now inhale here. Now here we are going to do Bahya Kumbha. As you exhale, you get into Trikonasana and hold the breath out in Bahya Kumbha. Do as per your capacity, whenever you feel like soft, slow inhalation, release. Relax, rotate, let's do it on the other side. Stretch your hands, inhale here. As you exhale, get into Trikonasana and hold the breath out into Bahya Kumbha. Release the kumbhak on an inhalation and come up. Relax your hands, walk your feet in. Just come and sit down wherever you were. Just give some time, close your eyes, observe the breaths. So moving ahead, the sessions are going to be planned in such a way that we deal with all the three doshas in different ways. So sometimes it might be kumbhaks of vat, physical practices of pitta, or some other time it might be the other way around. So nothing, all the three doshas, balancing of it will be covered in all the sessions. Everybody all of you, most of you have been doing it, in fact. It is possible for all of you to do it with the breaths and uh, attend all the nine sessions as Ashwini said. Just dropping in for one session is of no use because the benefits of it, you will see it after the nine sessions. Yeah? Anything else, Ashwini, Jaya? I think we are done. Yeah, I mean, we'll open up the floor to so, people for yeah, questions. You people but, you know, I just wanted to say one thing. So, like, Vata Pitta Kaka, right? Vata, it's like energy. It's like wind, okay? It's blowing on the fire. We need fire, okay? But too much of fire is not good. We need water to douse that fire, right? So, we need all three of them to balance create that balance within our body. And that's what we are working towards, right? Uh, breathing practices, you know, Nadi Shuddhi, what is that? That is also balancing. So, but these are geared towards balancing of your doshas because they are our main constitution. That is what we are talking about, you know, in today's uh, orientation. So if any of you have any questions, uh, please go ahead. Yeah, ask. because after the questions, we will end the session with the Surya Japa. Okay, so that some chanting also happens. So please go ahead. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. You'll have to unmute yourself and ask, okay, if you have any questions, doubts. No? Nobody has any questions. <laughs> I, I have a question. Like uh, I have developed some osteophyte in my left calf, so I cannot sit for a longer time. That's okay. okay. Uh, on the yes. mat, I mean to say. Ah. Yeah, so you can sit on your chair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I the physical practices, um, so Yogini, some, there will be some physical practices with every session. Um, so uh, whatever you could uh, do on the mat, 
you will do it. And in case if there are things that you cannot do it, we will give you an alternative of to kind of achieve the same thing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I wanted to ask, uh, will it be only in the mornings? Because uh, I may not be able to attend Tuesdays, actually. That is the problem. Uh, I think, uh, no, Manjiri, this session will be the morning. But it, this is going to be an on, uh, ongoing program. So it, Okay. So yeah. it's not just a nine uh, class, uh, Sessions, no, no, it right? is a nine sessions program. So now it is in the mornings. After that, we will have it in the evenings as we will repeat it or some oh. different. <laughs> okay. yeah. uh, I think, uh, Manjiri, uh, even if like you can attend only five or four, it's okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, like it's not that you have to complete all the nine sessions in one go. What Ashwini meant was, you know, out of curiosity, just drop in then don't come again and then again you know don't be like that that's the only thing it's not like you it has to be the consecutive nine sessions or something yeah, yeah right? because i'm really after interested this, uh, that's why i asked <laughs> yeah right and after this like we'll shift the same program to evening also so we we'll on you know for so that evening people also get the benefit of that yeah right um Tanvi, to answer your questions, no, because like I said, there are a lot of homeworks and everything. So we would like to observe the students um, to see how we are doing it. So if you're struggling, it shows in your face. So immediately we can call out your name and say, no, stop it, don't hold your breath. Or you're doing it wrong, do it this way, right? So for that reason, we will not be uh, giving any recordings of the sessions. It will be a live session for now. So once you have mastered it, maybe you've done it a couple of times, then maybe later on we will have a recorded uh, sessions of it available in our library. But at least for the first uh, few batches, it will be only live classes. So Aarti mentioned that, you know, people who've been uh, like working out or doing yoga for, the, for a long time uh, would are probably better prepared for this. So does it mean that if, you know, you... Uh, I mean, I've been like really coming off and on. So does, will it, uh, will it be possible for me to do it? Uh, Vanaja, no, no, I didn't mean it that way. It is ah, okay. just that over the past one year with the classes, which we have been doing, our body gets ready for it, right? Hmm. For any yeah. other different things. So that does not mean that you cannot do it. Okay. Of course you can do it. There is no doubt about it. And that is one of the major reasons that we want it in person. Uh, we can see you. That's the right. reason we are not even giving the recordings. Yeah. So absolutely don't worry. We are here to help you in any which way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Hi. Uh, Hi. Hello. Yeah. Uh, I'm not much aware of the mudra and the kumbhaks. Could you please uh, simplify it on the classes? It will be easier for uh, me to catch. Yeah, yeah, we will. We will. We will tell you exactly, you know, where, which part of your body are you going to lock it? Or which, how do you hold the uh, kumbak? So obviously the first few, like I said, the first few classes are going to be assuming that you no, know, nobody knows anything. So if you're aware of it, then probably you can hold for a longer time. But we will come in with the assumption that everybody is new to the session. Of or uh, I mean, and then we will explain in detail everything. Yeah. And once you have a grip of what it is, then you'll be able to hold it for a longer time or do better at it. Thank you. Ma. Yeah, Kavita. Ma'am, I took a break for two years and now I feel myself as a beginner. I lost my flexibility totally. So will I be able to do like earlier? Absolutely, Kavita. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no, don't worry about it. If you, uh, I mean, all of us will tell you to do it as per your capacity, okay? And then you'll see a difference, you know, as you go along. So it does not mean that, suppose one of us is showing you, you have to do it because it's your body, your flexibility, your current situation. You're building on it, no, slowly. So it's not like you're supposed to do it what you did two years ago. You are starting and your journey starts now. That's how it's going to be. And today when Aarti made all of you like Medha, the way Aarti made you do the practices, 
she just you know we just gave you an overview when we are doing it in the classes of course we we'll, like we you know like we know that some of you are not familiar with it so those who know we always say okay you start and then others we will tell you exactly what it means okay so we will explain yeah thank you ma'am and kavita you know what uh, start doing your regular hatha classes also okay okay i miss yeah. your in class terribly ma'am i really miss your in class i don't know yeah. so so join that so what arti ashwini and all mean is it this is not a replacement to your regular classes okay, okay. so do those classes and on top of that do these nine sessions okay for good benefit okay okay ma'am okay, ma thank you nice to see It's you like when we eat our yeah. food and then we take supplements or we take something else so these are like those supplements they are you know to your regular meals it's like that okay, okay. to give you added benefit that's the thing i think when we relate everything to food we understand better <laughs> all of us <laughs> so ashwini i have a question is that yeah. uh, like suppose these are an hour long session okay so yeah. uh, what proportion will it be physical I, i'm i'm not like going to hold you for it but uh, <laughs> yeah. mota mota like you know because uh, uh, you know how time how difficult time is for all of us so yeah. in yeah. that one hour will the physical and the aspect that you are talking of you jaya and uh, uh arti spoke about so will it all be covered as a kind of a yes. Uh, yes. consolidated yes. session because yes. that's something which you know uh, something else plus that becomes very difficult no it's consolidated first few sessions might run a little over because we are teaching and all of you get a hang of it but we have exactly you know uh, the way we planned it everything will have all of it some dynamic practices breathing practices mudras all of them together will form a session hmm. okay okay it's it's a complete session yeah yeah thank you yeah. okay sure yeah i just wanted to know what is the timing planned um it will be tuesdays and thursdays from 7 to 8 in the morning <laughs> school ma'am <laughs> so that's uh, i was asking for the recordings okay now we are planning okay. to have also in the evening now like sujata told manjiri now you are also a trained teacher so you can attend as many as possible and then later on attend in the evenings whenever evenings, you can attend yeah. in the morning yeah, yeah. you know yeah. mornings are a bit difficult because 7:30 is a school time so yeah. but uh, yeah. in the evenings i'll definitely okay So is it not okay. going to be like in a sequence or something? Like each class will have a separate thing, is it? No, as I said, yeah, yeah. Adi, each class will be a combination of practices for yeah, all the doshas. Yeah, yeah. But from class one to class two, there won't be like suppose if now I also have similar problem like Manjiri Thursday mornings my Iyengar class is clashing with our time. So I was just wondering now because in fact I had uh, message Jaya also. But uh, so <coughs> these are nine I... classes. Adishree, do this. Yeah. <laughs> what? Just nine classes. Do this. <laughs> <laughs> that is what I'm also inclined <laughs> towards. That. Um, so uh, that is what I was like wanting to ask. So can I attend like only Tuesdays and then the evening uh, time, or it'll be like yeah, yeah. distorted kind of a thing. <laughs> uh, it <laughs> won't be. It won't be distorted, but. it okay it's not like a you know like a, a drama where you have to watch the first one then only the next one and builds up but you'll miss okay you'll miss something which is different from the first class definitely okay and then third one is also different so it's like we've tried to give you a variety so you know and then i mean that's how it is but again you are a teacher you can attend if you attend all will be great but and then make up you know mom when are the evening batches starting ah uh, we will let you know shortly once the morning sessions are done um, we'll have to plan okay that. post that you'll start the session yeah not not parallel you know okay thank you and this won't be an ongoing thing right it is just um, nine and then that's it and in the evening also <laughs> like <laughs> 
will like how we want to continue we will we'll, yeah we'll see we'll take a call you know we definitely Manjari, want to i am it. sure yeah. that they will come up with a batch for this you know one batch for maintaining three doshas so you know what you know what we are trying to address so many issues so you know like uh, it last time it was bp now we are coming with three dosha then we are going to come up come up with thyroid and three dosha if we really get a nice good group then we will continue it is an ongoing and, and uh, we are even going to come up with insomnia we are going to you know because we are really in the mood to have solutions to the <laughs> to whatever problems people are facing yoga based solutions okay yes. so let's hope that we can continue giving you yeah i hope so <laughs> ma'am something for ocd also you try to find a solution <laughs> yeah really yeah, this is an alarming problem yeah so kavita arti will you know just uh, yeah i will uh, just yeah yeah so any more questions okay so as now many of you have many more issues which need to be dealt with the yoga practices so anything if you have in your mind just directly message me we will surely look into it and come up with something for your benefit that is for sure so as sujata just mentioned that we are planning for thyroid insomnia and everything but now as kavita said ocd or anything else which you think needs to be dealt with just directly message me call me or anybody any one of us we are always there to help you yeah so looking forward to seeing you from tuesday yeah so before we end uh, anybody any more questions okay so let's just jaya should we do a surya japa yeah, yeah. so you can chant along with it so she'll just share the audio oh. Gently rub your palms against each other. Massage the bones around your eyes, your face, your neck, your shoulder. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, everyone.